I just got back a medical report you shouldn't know from it. <laughs> God. If it wasn't for apolipoprotein A, I don't know where I'd be today. It's the one lipid you cannot c- c- You can't correct apolipoprotein A. I got to tell you that. You know, many of us get blood tests, all the guys over 50, a, you know, LPA. No, no, I'm saying you get uh, LDL, HDL, VLDL, HLDL, right? And you get panicked and you take Lipitor. I can't take those drugs because it, they cripple me fundamentally. They affect your liver. They cripple you. They make you uh, mentally fatigued. Don't worry about it. Terrible side effects. I know so many guys, they go out, oh, don't worry about it. I can eat what I want. I'm taking this. I know guys with diabetes that take pills for blood sugar and eat like fools. They don't, they don't adjust their diet. They listen to the quacks who tell them, take this and you'll be fine. So they take six different pills and eat like a pig, and they wonder why they drop dead. Unbelievable to me. So nevertheless, I can't take any drugs. So I'm saturated with vitamin C, saturated with vitamin E, saturated with B vitamins, saturated with certain herbs. But there's a fraction, a lipid fraction, that if I didn't have this fraction, apolipoprotein A, I would have been dead 30 years ago. I mean, look, I could die tomorrow. Who knows? God forbid. My father died young. God rest his soul. Grandfather died. I mean, I used to live, live, when I was young, oh, father died young. He just panicked me. So I'd ask, well, oh, grandpa died at 47. So I would like latch on to any hope. Well, but in Europe, he lived long, right? The great grandfather, oh, yeah, lived to, nine, to 37. So that was like a death sentence. The, the, the paternal, the paternal uh, inheritance is like a death sentence. <laughs> Horrible. So all my life I've been running with, like, what the? So I went into nutrition. I've searched the world for answers. Nutrition, herbal medicine, homeopathy, epidemiology, you name it. And you come back to living your life and doing the best you can because at a certain point, the stress of worrying about it and modifying your lifestyle can kill you faster than anything else. So I do the best I can, but I can't take drugs for any of it, right? But the, the lipids are so upside down that by definition of what we believe today, I should be dead. If you looked at my LDL and my HDL, you'd probably panic. You'd, you'd run into a cardiac ward. But as I say, my, my apolipoprotein A, which you cannot modify, I don't care what drug you take or what uh, vitamins you take, you can't change it. It's, an, it's, it's, a genetic, it's a genetic factor. Mine is very low. That's why I'm, I must have inherited my mother's. My, I must have inherited my mother's uh, uh, blood chemistry. I don't know. Who looks? Who knows? We didn't, they didn't know blood chemistry in those days. My mother ate what she wanted. Lived to 88. Okay, she died pretty bad in the end, but that's another story. Horrible, the other one. But you don't get out of this world alive. You're going to get something, right? One thing or the other. The worst thing you can get is Alzheimer's disease. I was in that field for five years. Terrible. You know, heart attacks, people already know what to li- how to live with it. Cancer, they can live with it, God forbid. But you can't live with Alzheimer's disease. like losing your soul. I've been thinking a lot about that lately because I was in that field of research for years. And there was, you know... In fact, I wrote a book in 1982 called Reducing the Risk of Alzheimer's, laughed at by the medical establishment. Everything I wrote in that book is now the current thinking in Alzheimer's uh, uh, prevention. Everything I wrote, I'm always 20 years ahead of my time in everything. That's why my prognostications with regard to what liberalism has wrought, you know already I'm right. You know already what it's done. Why, something good has come of it? Something good has come of it. Yeah, really, terrific. So anyway, uh, what do you want to talk about? Mostly you don't even check for it. You don't check for lipo, L- LPA when you get a blood test. No one, oh, my PSA is low. Prostate, that's good, 1.8. That's a good one. You, I, I'm going to tell you a funny story about PSA. Every guy over 50 has that test, right? They're afraid of prostate cancer, a terrifying thing. So you watch out if your PSA goes up above four. So thank God mine is low, and I have very high stress. But I want, about 20 years ago, I had a, you know, down in that department, some pains. I went to some quack in New York, some, uh, some guy who investigates that area of the body. I remember, never forget, I came back. So he says to me, either you're getting too much sex or not enough. I said, boy, you're a really very, very skilled diagnostician. Thank you for that one. You know what I'm saying? That was an interesting analysis. You got either you're having too much sex or not enough. I said, well, that's a wide range there. Right there, that's very good. <laughs> You want to hear something funny about prostate? Uh, at that time, 1982, that's a long time ago. I was young, a younger guy. I had like pains then. Blah, blah, blah. I went to a herbalist in San Francisco. To this day, I can remember going there, Chinese herbalist. I even know where it is. I'm not going to tell you where it is because you'll rush there and buy the pills. So I explained to the Chinese guy pains in this area, blah, blah, blah. So he sells me little black pills, 
which I took. One course of these little black, black pills, I never had another pain for the rest of my life. So I went and bought dozens of these bottles. I gave one to an African guy I knew in New York. He was a doorman. Big, strong guy. We talked. He said he had prostate problems. I gave him these pills. Three months later, went back to that same hotel. He said they were gone, you know, the pain. And other people. So I looked into what was in the pills, what was the announced, uh, you know, components of the pills. And there's one interesting part of it all. I'm not going to read you all of the herbs. The Chinese theory of prostatitis, not prostate cancer, but of an inflamed prostate, the Chinese theory is much different than the America, the Western view. Their theory is that all prostate problems are the result of a bacterial infection that was never cured properly, whether it was a, a urinary tract infection or a gonorrheal type infection that you had when you were young that was not properly treated or, you know, you took antibiotics and it never cured it. That's their theory. So they use herbs that, amongst other things, have antibacterial properties, probably as powerful, if not more powerful, than some of our uh, antibacterials in these pills. And when I was in, in the, medical pra the uh, nutritional medical practice, I helped an awful lot of people. I know you're going to all ask, where can I get I'm not going to tell you because it's not what I'm doing now. I, I may do it one day just to, to help people, but there's only so many hours in a day, and I'm wasting a lot of time right now with a lot of negativity. But soon this negativity will be gone, and when it's gone, I'll go into helping humanity again. I may even do nutritional consulting, personal, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, per personal, what do you call it? Bay Wolf, what do we call that on the show? Life coach, life coach. They call up, I got a problem, what should I do? I go to the in-laws, she's wearing a hat that I don't like, and I go there, I feel sick. Do I tell my wife to tell her mother to take the hat off? You know, that kind of personal stuff. I, you know, I don't know. They're people. You can't believe what people will ask you. They don't know what to do. There's no, see, there's no leadership. There's no one around to tell these older and young people. But I, I don't claim to know the answer, but I have some answers. Well, that was a long run from the palmist to the, uh, crazy in-laws with a crazy hat. I'll be right back.